Florida, which was a kooky idea. But we did it. And had there been no arcade in Florida, Brian, I'm sorry, no Heidi. And had Heidi, when we called Heidi and said, hey, would you like to come to Florida and run an arcade? And she said, let's see, it's 20 degrees up here in Wisconsin. My brain is frozen. You want me to go to Florida for the weekend on your dime? <laughs> yeah, I'll come to Florida, which she did. So she comes down here. Then she decides to move here. That's where Cheryl comes in. <laughs> Cheryl has power over her two daughters. <laughs> A lot of power. And you know what? Cheryl, you let Heidi come to Florida. You didn't stop her. And Mark moved her to Florida. He said, I want her out of Wisconsin. You're going to Florida. She did. There you go. So then she gets down here, and we have the final, one of the final hurdles. And that is, she can't meet anyone. So she's got a really big decision to make. She's got to go on some kind of electronic service. Match.com. But you know what? Match.com cost a hundred dollars. Do any of you guys know Heidi? A hundred dollars? My God, those, you know, she did it. And they're lurking, lurking. On Match.com is Brian. <laughs> and that is the team. The team of people that delivered Heidi to you. So, why did Heidi come to Florida? Really? She's sitting up there in Wisconsin. She's near the family. She loves her family. Sure, it's cold, but she doesn't know any better. <laughs> She comes to Florida, Brian, because she's missing something in her life. And you know what she was missing in her life, Brian? You. <laughs> so it all worked out and it turned out to be a beautiful thing because you are exactly what Heidi was looking for. And Brian is exactly what you were looking for. So you've got each other now. And you're a beautiful couple. You've got a smart, witty, intelligent, crafty, <laughs> sneaky, stubborn, <laughs> badger. And, and you've got one of the sweetest, nicest, human beings that you're, you're ever going to meet. And together, you're going to have a beautiful life. Congratulations and a toast, ladies and gentlemen, to these two right here. Drop it. Okay, folks, next I'm going to hand the mic over for our next toast. Say hello to Brother Eddie.
When I came to the realization that I wasn't alone in my mother's womb, that was also the start of a lot of pushing and shoving matches that would ensue in the coming decades. Ever since that moment, though, we have grown to become great friends and confidants. It's not too often that you get the opportunity to grow up with someone who is almost exactly like you. Although, I must say, I did get all the good thoughts. <laughs> Seriously, though. Growing up with someone who looks and acts almost exactly like yourself can have its ups and downs. While I like to think that I got the better of Brian, whenever we would have a disagreement, battle of wits, or even those occasional pushing and shoving matches, I must admit that Brian did get the better of me on occasion. No, he wasn't the first to get married, and he, it was extremely rare for him to beat me in a fight. But, from time to time, he did come out on top. For example, when we were in high school, everyone was always trying to get us to switch classes. It wasn't until one day, during our senior year, that we finally got the courage to do so. Here's how that went down. While I was acting just as though I was Brian, and going about my day as I thought Brian would, he had something else up his sleeve. He decided that he would sabotage my social life. <laughs> On that infamous day, while he attended my home ec class playing Eddie, I realized that perhaps he didn't love me as much as I thought he did. He decided to continuously blow kisses to the most unattractive girl on the planet. <laughs> While everyone was obviously under the impression that he was me. And I'm not just talking about one or two kisses, and I'm not just talking about a slightly unattractive girl. He did this for the entire 40 minute class period, and I hate calling anyone unattractive, but this girl was about a negative 10 on a scale from one to 10. She would spend her whole, the whole, her whole day in class picking random things out of her hair and then, before moving them into her mouth, chewing them up and swallowing them. <laughs> By the end of that class, Brian had thoroughly convinced this girl, as well as some of our other classmates, that I had a crush on her. It wasn't until the next day when I realized that half of the class was looking at me and laughing, that I learned of Brian's horrendous, yet admittedly clever antics. Brian, today I would like to announce I finally forgive you. <laughs> they say that twins have a lot of weird quirks. While we didn't exactly have telepathy and cannot feel each other's physical pain, we do have a tendency to know how the other one is feeling. For example, right now Brian is really worried that I will butcher this speech. <laughs> and he really can't wait to smash Heidi's face in the wedding cake later. <laughs> Don't say I didn't warn you, Heidi. <laughs> a few years ago, Brian invited my wife Whitney and I out for a drink with a new girl he had met named Heidi. He told me that she had a really fun personality, was very pretty, and spoke with a Colombian accent. <laughs> he was convinced that she wasn't being completely honest with him when she said she was from Wisconsin. He was certain that she was not from this country at all. Upon meeting her, I found that Brian was pretty accurate. <laughs> Heidi's personality was very easy going. She was very pretty. And she did have a rather unique accent. Although, I have confirmed that she is definitely not from Columbia. <laughs> One of the most intriguing things about Heidi, as many of you know, is that she has a resume of a burly 300-pound man. 
and stories of a nine-year-old grandfather. Not only does her resume include only a casino, working as a manager of a payday loan company, and being a window salesperson, but most notably, she worked for quite some time as a prison guard. Breaking up fights among some of Wisconsin's most honorable citizens. <laughs> Not exactly the job you would picture a tiny 90 pound woman having. <laughs> then again, Heidi is not your typical 90 pound woman. She is one of the most honest people I have met, a tremendous aunt to her niece and nephews, and quite frankly, the perfect match for Brian. I must admit that when I first heard that Brian had fallen for Heidi, a part of me was sad. We had been together all throughout our lives, and until they met, I don't think we had even spent more than a few nights away from each other in our entire lives. We were about as close as two brothers could be. However, if there was one person in the entire world who I would want to steal Brian away from me, that would be Heidi. Brian and Heidi get along better than most couples, and it's not just for the fact that they have a ton of similarities that make them just right for each other. It's the way that their differences complement each other. Over the years, Brian and I have had a lot of great stories to share. Today marks the start of a new chapter in his life, a chapter which will certainly contain many more great stories in the coming years, only now with Heidi added to the plot. Heidi will make an awesome wife to Brian, mother to their future children, and twin sister in law to me. I can't wait to see how the story unfolds, and Heidi, I'd like to welcome you to the family. Let's raise our glasses to toast Brian. Cheers. Some of you may not know this, 
but Heidi has been the self-proclaimed princess of our family for decades. <laughs> so calling this wedding a royal wedding only seems fitting. <laughs> Heidi has gone as far as arguing with her beautiful little niece to stake claim on that title of being the princess of our family. <laughs> it's a well-known fact that she wears that crown very proudly, and she's earned it. She has somehow managed to get everyone in our family to serve her, protect her, defend her, worship her, and place her high upon that pedestal that her royal title deserves. Go Heidi. Some of you probably think I'm being a little facetious, but I'm not. <laughs> Heidi has always been incredibly independent and more than capable of taking care of herself. But when friends and family are present, we will all dote on her and she happily accepts. We've been human snooze buttons for her alarm clock. We've all nursed her back from hell during a migraine. We've all cut up her steak and picked her chicken off the bone. Cause bony chicken's kind of gross. It only seems fitting that a princess like Heidi should marry her Prince Charming. And Brian is just that. He is such a gentleman, and he is kind, and he is funny, and he lets his princess be the center of his universe. But Brian can also be kind of mean and silly. <laughs> In order to stake his claim as Prince Charming, he has been known to occasionally toss a frog in the general direction of unsuspecting victims and then laugh at their screams of terror. As as sworn teenagers, Heidi and I, our dear friend Sarah, created a trusty list of qualities that their future suitors must possess. This list was nothing more than an old tattered shower curtain that was hanging in the garage and a permanent marker. I don't recall everything on that list, but there are a few things I do remember. Their future suitors must have a job. <laughs> must have a car. We were teenagers. Must have a nice smile. There was something about a nose, but I don't think Brian has it. <laughs> so whatever. Brian, congratulations. You passed the test with flying colors. My first interaction with Brian was odd to say the least. I had stalked him on Facebook like nobody did. <laughs> but he didn't know me. I was a complete stranger. I already knew that he was hands-on. He had great big muscles and whatever. <laughs> Tree to height and eyes and all that good stuff. I knew he had a twin brother, they ran a successful business, but this guy was still a chemical with each stranger. What if he was like this total creeper? I demanded regular paid safety checks from Heidi while they were on their dates. You know, like, call me on your way back. Tell me where you're at. Tell me when you leave. You gotta call me back. Tell me it's okay. I wanna make sure he's not following you home. Take a different route. You know, all that crazy business. Because they met on the internet, like Jim Harrison did over now. I was keeping that shit secret. <laughs> Whatever, it's all off the open now. <laughs> so I stalked and I prayed and I hoped that Heidi's judgment and gut instinct could be trusted. And then there was this dreaded day a few weeks after they started dating. And I received the call that Heidi had been robbed at work. Her purse, along with her keys, and her cell phone and wallet had all been stolen. She had no way to communicate with Brian or anyone else. I had no choice but to finally reach out to Brian and communicate with him. Because I've been stalking him. I mean, so I'm not <laughs> I introduced myself in a frantic Facebook message, explaining what had happened to Heidi and begging him. This complete stranger I've been begging. Please go to my sister and hug her, keep her safe. And at this point, I'm sure you consider running for the hills. Not only has this craziness happened to her, but you have this crazy sister on the other end of the internet telling you, please go check on her. And he went to her, and he hugged her, and he took her home with him and kept her safe. But I still wonder, was this guy a crazy lunatic? I mean, there was still a possibility. I didn't know if I could trust him, 
But how on earth could I protect Heidi at this point? I was so far away. The way that Brian came to her rescue and he emotionally supported her through this traumatic event, and the way he cared for her in the days following, made it crystal clear to me that I didn't need to protect her anymore. He would. <laughs> I didn't give up that easy. <laughs> That's hard for me, buddy. <laughs> I've always protected her. That was a tough one to give up. <laughs> That's all I need mean now, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to be able to help you out that stuff anymore. I'm too far away. <laughs> I spent many nights praying to God and asking that God would provide Heidi the strength that she needed to get through that trauma. Unbeknownst to me, God answered my prayers with Brian and his big, strong muscles, <laughs> his kind heart, his loving nature, and his love and support. Without him, Eddie, Whitney, Marty, and Carol in his life, and Heidi's life at that exact moment, Heidi would probably be back in Wisconsin by now. <laughs> so thank you all for screwing that up. <laughs> I think I knew long before Heidi and Brian knew that they were right for each other. The first trip that my family made to Florida included a first stop at Disney. Of course, Auntie Heidi and Brian joined us because if you're in Florida, they have to. It's just the way it works. I could see this incredible glow in Heidi that I had never seen before. I know that many men wouldn't be willing to spend a day at Disney with complete strangers. Well, I anyway, did be on Facebook that one time when we were about Heidi's little robbery deal. You know, whatever. We were still strangers. But, I, but Brian spent that entire day, though, with us. And he did that for Heidi. But he showed me so much about his character that I didn't fully appreciate until much later on. Who does that? Who willingly goes to Disney with his girlfriend's sister's family. A patient, kind, generous man who's willing to sacrifice his sanity for the woman he loves. On the same trip to Florida, I continue to see the glimpses of their unpronounced love for one another. One another. Sorry, I can't talk anymore. I'm so sorry. God, I had a lot to say. Heidi and Brian, they have this glow that returns. Every single time one of them walks out of the room and then they return. Their faces beam with joy, their smiles are so big and bright, the twinkle in their eye is amazing. It's like they've been long lost lovers that haven't seen each other in years. During that trip I sat in amazement wondering if that was just real or the newness of the relationship. The joyful excitement continued each and every single time one of them left and then returned. That same joyful excitement still exists three years later. You can actually see the love radiating off the two of them when one of them leaves and returns, whether it's from walking the Kenya or a long week business trip. Whether, the, I'm sorry, the glow always is there. What the glow tells me is that each of you is happier and more complete when the other one is present. You are two halves that make a whole. I truly believe that I, that Ryan, sorry, Ryan, let's get this straight. I believe that Brian is the peanut butter to Heidi's jelly, the Harry to her Sally, the bacon to her eggs. These two really are a match made in heaven. I'm not done yet. I'm so sorry. I feel like they're all eating right now. I felt so incredibly honored when Brian decided to crash our family trip to Chicago last December. Not like a couple months ago, but like a year ago. He let me help contrive the perfect plan to surprise her. The plan was for our family to go to the bean, to pose for a picture at a specific time, and then Brian would just magically appear in our reflections. For those of you that are not familiar with the bean, it's a large metallic blob that looks like a bean. Like a in downtown Chicago. It's a reflective piece of artwork and a landmark. 
Heidi and Brian had been there just a few months before, so it seemed like the perfect place for the proposal. But it wasn't. It was bitterly cold, and we were tired, and Brian was there waiting for us. To arrive, and he was freezing his Floridian butt off. But the Arctic temperature, that cold, cold December. I insisted on the stop anyway. I begged Dad to just support, just support whatever I decide, Dad. Whatever I want to do today, we're going to do. He didn't know Brian was coming, so it was a surprise for him as well. Heidi was so resistant and pretty much furious that I was demanding this little side trip to the beam for the cell side. And she was cold. And she'd been cold all day long because we were in Chicago. And it was the same. It was terrible, it was cold. <laughs> when we finally arrived at the beam, we did what everybody does. We smiled, we posed pictures, and I was like, oh, one more, one more, just, just one more. And then finally, Brian appears in the reflection at the beam. And Heidi says, oh, that looks like Brian. <laughs> Thinking she's all delirious and that her brain must be completely frozen, she like turns around and Brian gets down on one knee and so does Heidi. <laughs> that poor girl, she was so confused. She had no idea what's going on. And her brain was completely frozen. I don't even know if she said yes. I'm not sure. I, I, did you? Did you say yes? It doesn't really matter anymore. They said I do today. That's all that really matters, I guess. It was a beautiful day that day, despite the incredibly cold weather. I felt so blessed to be a part of that day. Much like I feel blessed to be here today. I feel like we all witnessed something so unique and wonderful and beautiful and historical today. This marriage is one that really truly is a fairy tale. Two amazing people met. They fell in love. They got married. We're all here, you saw it. And they are about to embark on the rest of their fairy tale. I know that great things will continue to fill your story. So you'll move into the Crassus Sun Castle. Then you'll go on your fairy tale honeymoon followed by many little princesses and princes. Is that the right thing? Is that right? Prince Charming. Princess or Prince Charming? Whatever. And a wonderful life filled with more joy, love, excitement, and beauty than either of you have ever dreamed of. It won't always be easy, but if you can keep working on that glow, the twinkle in each other's eyes, and keep each other smiling, those Big, beautiful smile. I know your life will be magical. With that, a toast. Cheers to the fairy tale and a lifetime of bliss to the princess and her prince charming. And I apologize. I got a lot of words. Have a good job. Okay, folks, I'm not going to turn you over to Jamie and the wonderful staff here at White Orchid. They'll be serving their dinners. So don't forget if you have any special songs you'd like to hear or dance to, come on up. Don't be shy, let us know. We're going to have some fun tonight.